Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to discuss the next part of our qualitative data analysis using NVivo. Uh, yesterday we have discussed uh, different methods of uh, qualitative data collection, like observation, like interview, focus group discussion, pictures, document view, and social media and website. And we have discussed these methods in greater detail. Uh, I have shared uh, the videos with every participant so that you have seen uh, how we can collect uh, data using observation, interview, focus group, dis discussion, pictures, document view, and social media websites and blogs. Uh, today, uh, I am going to discuss the first research design in qualitative research. Uh, that is narrow research design. Uh, sorry, uh, that is narrative research design, its type, process, and application. There are basically six research designs, six different research designs that uh, you need to understand in order to correctly apply your qualitative research. So whenever you need to design your qualitative research, you need to understand that there are six research designs uh that that are applicable as it in in terms of methodology that you are going to design for your qualitative research that is uh either you are going for a narrative research design or phenomenological research design participatory action research design case study uh research design ethnographical research design and grounded theory research design. So uh, there are different circumstances in which you apply any one of these research design. So uh, let, let us start from narrative research design, its type, process and application, when these research designs are applied and in what category uh, you may be able uh, to apply uh, different research design. So let me start from the slides itself. I have uh, uh, prepared very effective slides on uh, this topic because this is very important topic uh, for considering your research design in qualitative research. So uh, either you may have narrative research design, its type, process, and application, or you may have phenomenological research design, process, and application, or you may have participatory action research design, its process and application. There are six research design, but I have designed uh, this presentation for the first three uh, research design. And uh, I will design uh, next three uh, research design of qualitative research for the next uh, uh, presentation. So in this presentation, I will cover these uh, three research design more importantly how they are different from each other and when they are applied. Myself, Zahid Bashir, I am a faculty member at Department of Commerce, University of Gujarat, and a PhD scholar at Ali College of Commerce, University of Punjab, Lahore. So uh, let's start from narrative research design. So what is basically the narrative research design? Uh, narrative research design is basically uh, the narration or uh, the spoken or written text giving an account of an event action or series of events actions chronologically connected. So when you narrate some story, uh, some series of events in a story, uh, some series of actions in a story, uh, in a chronological order, uh, then you are basically uh, conducting a narrative research so it may be spoken words, it may be written text, it may be spoken text. So each event or action is chronologically connected. Chronologically means they are connected uh, in arrangement of time, in, in a logical order of time. So how to implement narratives? You need to select the subjects. Uh, you need to collect the data. You report findings and you uh, describe the meanings of what you have found. So uh, actually the narrative research is a qualitative research approach that focus on studying stories or narratives shared by individuals to understand their experiences, perspectives, beliefs, and values. So whenever 
you basically uh, whenever you are interested to understand the life experiences the perspectives the beliefs or the values of individuals you are basically dealing with the narrative research so in narrative research researcher analyze the content the structure and the meaning of these narratives to gain insight into various phenomena uh, it, it aims to uncover the underlying themes, patterns, and complexity of human experiences through storytelling. So what is the basic thing in narrative research that is storytelling? So it may be a storing storytelling by someone else. It may be you that you are uh, telling your story. So uh, in, in uh, both of the cases, it is a narrative research. So what are the examples of narrative research? Let's say a researcher is interested in studying the experiences of survivor of natural disaster. Sometime uh, you may have experienced an earthquake or a bomb blast or a tsunami or something like that. Uh, so when, when you are interested as a researcher in studying the experiences of survivor of these natural disaster, you are basically going to have some stories uh, you are going to have some experiences uh, of these survivors. This is basically narrative research because they are going to narrate uh, how they have feel, uh, how they have uh, felt during that natural disaster. So they may conduct narrative research by interviewing survivors and asking them to share their stories about the event and its aftermath. So they will share their stories uh, how they feel uh, the event when it, it it happened and what what uh, how they feel after math so these stories may include details about their experiences during the disaster their emotions coping mechanism challenges faced in rebuilding their life, and their ref, uh, reflection on the event so uh, they will they will share their experiences, uh, their emotions, how they cope uh, the event, how they uh, 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 how they face the challenges in rebuilding their lives, uh, uh, how they reflect on that event. So the researcher would collect these narratives and analyze them using qualitative methods such as thematic analysis. It is one of uh, uh, the analysis design in qualitative research, one of the most uh, useful and most recognized uh, uh, qualitative research de design, that is thematic analysis. Uh, so in case of narrative research, you, you are going to use thematic analysis. I will let you know how to apply the thematic anal analysis in the coming sessions when I am going to use the NVivo software. So they would, they would look for recurring themes, patterns, and contradictions within the stories to gain a deeper understanding of the survivor experience because every survivor has different experience. So you may have different themes, you may have different patterns, you may have contradiction within the story. Someone says that uh, he, he has lost some, someone, some loved ones, in that uh, uh, natural disaster. Someone says that uh, all his family members are survived uh, during that natural disaster. So there may be contradiction within the stories. Uh, the, uh, through this analysis, the researcher may uncover insight into the psychological, social, and cultural impact of natural disaster on individual and country. So this, this is uh, basically the simple example of narrative research how a narrative research uh, can be conducted uh, using qualitative data. So you need to have uh, the experiences of individuals on some life event. So they will share their experiences. They will tell you <coughs> what, what kind of emotions or coping strategies they analyze during that period and uh, what kind of challenges they have faced, what kind of reflection they have. Uh, wh whether they have the bad experiences, whether they have the good experiences uh, during that uh, uh, happening of that event. So that is basically the narrative research. So in, in, in this picture, you can see that there is some researcher 
and he is asking uh, someone to tell their story. There is an old lady, maybe she is telling some story about herself, about uh, her life events uh, that she has seen throughout in her life. Uh, maybe she is uh, telling some significant event about herself to the researcher. So this, this kind of research in which someone uh, tells the story about herself or someone may, may uh, also done research on uh, herself uh, is becomes the narrative research. There are, there are basically uh, three different types of uh, narrative research. Uh, the first one is biographical narrative research. The second one is autobiography uh, narrative research. And the third one is personal experience story. So there are uh, some slightest difference between uh, three of them. And you need to understand what is the difference between biographical, autobiographical, and personal experiences story. So let's start uh, from uh, their explanation and their example. And this, this category of narrative research is basically given by Cresswell uh, on page 54. Uh, according to Cresswell, uh, there are three types of uh, narrative research, biographical narrative research, autobiographical na na narrative research, and personal experiences uh, of, of the story narrative research. So let's let, uh, discuss the first one. What is biographical narrative research? Uh, this approach focuses on examining the life stories of individuals to understand their personal experiences, identities, and trajectories over time. So whenever you are going to study someone else's story, it, it means you are a researcher and you are asking someone else uh, to tell you their life events, their uh, life stories uh, that they may have faced uh, significantly during their whole life. So uh, when, when you are asking someone else to tell their stories, uh, it is a biographical narrative research. Researcher may analyze autobiographies, memories, or oral histories to explore how individuals construct and interpret their life narrative. Uh, example includes studying the life stories of immigrants to understand the dynamics of migration, cultural adaptation, and identity negotiation within the context of globalization. So uh, you, you may be interested to understand the life story of life stories of immigrants that how they migrated, how they adopt the culture of the new area or the new country, uh, how they negotiate regarding their identity within the globalization context. So uh, here you can see a picture. Uh, there, there is someone who is telling about uh, their stories or their experiences. Maybe she's a uh, immigrant and she's telling her story to some researcher. So when you are a researcher and you are asking someone to tell their story, this is a biographical narrative research. So in case of biographical narrative research, you are going to ask, ask someone else to tell their story or tell their experience about a specific event or specific happening uh, or specific uh, chronological, uh, uh, you can say the stories uh, from someone else. Autobiography, this is uh, different from biographical research. Uh, in case of autobiographical narrative research, it focuses on studying the life stories of individuals from their own perspective. When you are the researcher and you are also the storyteller, it means if I am uh, the storyteller and I am also the researcher and I am uh, narrating story about myself, how I have experienced something or how I have uh, uh, faced some event in my life then it is autobiography. In case of biography, uh, there is someone else who is telling their story and you are a researcher, you are recording their stories. But in case of autobiography, you are the individual who is telling uh, their story and you are, you, you are writing your story. Uh, so this, is, this becomes the autobiography. 
it explores how individual constructs and interpret their own experiences identities and meanings over time so example includes exploring the autobiographical narratives of a cancer survivor to understand their experiences of illness coping strategy and reflection on mortality uh, on mortality and resilience uh, you often has uh, 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 watched uh, some interviews from cancer survivors they tell their stories that how they have faced uh, uh, the period of time during their cancer disease how they face the cancer disease how they uh, basically handle that disease and how they manage uh to uh, uh how they manage uh to control that disease or defeat that disease so whenever someone else uh whenever the researcher uh, himself or herself tells about her story it becomes autobiography so uh, this is this is basically the reflection of a storyteller he's a researcher and he's also a storyteller so sometimes a person uh, uh, write his or her own story so it becomes autobiography uh, you may have uh, uh, seen uh, many uh, politicians books they have written uh, their stories in that books themselves so those books are basically the autobiography so you can do a narrative research like this then uh there is a difference between biography versus autobiography in case of biographical narrative research the narratives are typically collected from multiple individuals or sources other than the researcher themselves that is the only difference you need to understand uh, in case of biography the storyteller is different person and the researcher is different person the storyteller storyteller uh, or the participant may be telling his story or may be sharing his experiences while you as a researcher is recording those events uh, in terms of biographical research while in case of autobiographical narrative research the narratives are derived directly from the researcher own experience so researcher is telling the story about himself or herself in autobiography so researcher use self reflection introspection and personal storytelling to explore their own life stories perspectives and sub subjective experience like i have discussed that uh, some of the politicians may have written uh, the books on their own life uh, so uh, if if you write stories about your own life it is an autobiography but if you write uh, some stories on someone else life it is a biography so both of these are basically the kinds of narrative research so in case of biography uh, you can see a picture she was an artist it means uh, the person who is writing the story uh, who is writing the story is a researcher and he is writing someone else story in case of biography but in case of autobiography uh, the researcher tells his own story uh, of his own life events his own uh you you can say what he has uh, faced in his own life his own life experiences uh, in chronological order the third category is personal experiences story uh, a researcher conduct personal narrative research on individuals who have undergone significant life transitions uh, sometimes uh, there is nothing bad happened uh, with the participant in case of uh, biography there might be uh, a significant possibility that something bad has happened in uh, in the participant life but in case of personal experience story there is something uh, 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 has happened with the participant that has changed uh, uh, that uh, that participant like uh, uh, who have undergone significant life transition such as becoming parents for the first time so there there is a there is a happiness uh, when when you become parent for the first time uh, if you are not married and you have not experienced this feeling uh, you you can ask uh, from any person who have become parent for the first time whether it is a lady or whether uh, it, it it is a uh, male uh, 
uh, you may ask them uh, how they feel when when they came to know that they are going to become parent for the first time so they will express their feeling so this kind of personal experience uh, story is is becomes the narrative research uh, in the researcher's mind <coughs> So through in-depth interview and analysis of personal narratives, the researcher explored the emotional experiences, the challenges, the transformation associated with parenthood. So uh, in this case, uh, you, you will understand the transformation. Like uh, someone has uh, faced a tough time in his life, which has made him a very bold person, uh, which has transformed him or her as a bold person and uh, which he or she was not before. So uh, the, uh, so when uh, some transformation has occurred in someone's life, it, it becomes a personal experience story. So how a person becomes bold for how a person becomes strong uh, ever before, what has happened to that particular person which has made him strong or bold, uh, that is personal experience story. So by examining how individual constructs and make sense of their experiences through storytelling, the study aims to uncover the diverse range of meaning and interpretation attached to the transition to the parenthood. So uh, you may ask different persons uh, about their different personal experiences like, I know what I saw, uh, it worked for me, uh, it looked and I felt better, my experience is my proof. It is my truth. I believe it when I see it. So everybody has their own personal experience, which has made them change, which has made them either weaker or bolder or something else. So when you when you notice a transition in someone else uh, that has changed uh, that person, it means uh, you are going to conduct a personal experience story by asking her how they has uh, how how the participant has changed how how their life has changed uh, what has significantly changed their life so it is a personal experience story next is a uh, phenomenological research that is a second uh, research design but you need to understand that uh, what we have covered so far and how many times do you we have we have 15 minutes more all right, we can cover phenomenological research design. We have covered the narrative research design, its type, its process, and how it is applied. So you can apply in different uh, techniques by narrating someone's research or by narrating your own story or by narrating someone's personal experience. So let's start phenomenological research design. What is, what it is, how, uh, uh, what, what is, the process of applying uh, the phenomenological research design. It is the second one uh, in this uh, 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 qualitative research design technique. So what is phenomenological research? One of the most challenging notion to acknowledge in qualitative research is that people perceive the world around them differently from other people. Uh, you may have a different point of view. Uh, the other person may have different point of view about the same thing. It means the people around you may have different perspective. They may have different meanings. They, have, they may have different, uh, you can say, perception about the same thing. Uh, so it means that the world around you may have different perception about the same things. Because everyone's circumstances, life experiences, value system, and biological factors are different. It is challenging, if not impossible, to achieve an objective understanding of all but the most basic concept. You need to understand uh, at what level they are same and at what level they are different. Uh, sometimes uh, when you ask someone uh, about their experience of a common thing they will provide you their own experience or they will provide you their perception or the meaning they have about that particular event uh, someone else may uh, respond differently but there are some common things that they will share we we need to understand uh, the common things as well as the different things 
in phenomenological research. So phenomenological research is an approach within qualitative research that aims to explore and understand individual life experiences of a particular phenomena. How different individual basically uh, uh, respond towards a particular phenomena or towards a same phenomena. It, it, it seeks to uncover the essence or underlying meaning of these experiences by examining them from the perspective of the participant themselves. So in case of narrative research, you are basically uh, recording the experiences of individuals. But in case of uh, uh, phenomenological research, the, the number of peoples are more than uh, one. Uh, you, you are going to find out uh, uh, the life experiences of a group of people about a specific event. Uh, for example, if, if a plane crashes uh, and uh, the survivors uh, survived during plane crash and you ask one by one uh, about their experience toward it, uh, towards the plane crash, Everybody may have their different experience. They will, they will share something common and they will share something different in terms of emotion, in, in terms of how they felt during that plane crash. So the phenomena may be same for each one, but their perception towards the phenomena may be different. So this is phenomenological research. So uh, whereas a narrative study reports the life of a single individual, a phenomenological study described the meaning of several individuals of their lived experiences. So when you are uh, considering several experiences and uh, their live experiences towards a particular phenomena, you are basically considering phenomenological research. In case of narrative research, you are basically focusing on a particular uh, individual. Uh, and their life experiences. While in case of phenomenological study, you are considering several individuals and how they feel, how they experience a particular uh, common event they have faced uh, altogether. So elements of phenomenological research include identification of shared experience. You need to identify uh, which is uh, the experience uh, which which, which uh, a, a number of people have uh, commonly shared. Uh, so you need to identify uh, that phenomena or that shared experience. Uh, phenomenological research attempts to locate the universal nature of an experience. You need to understand that there may be some common experiences and there may be some uh, difference of opinion uh, regarding that experience. So you need to point out uh, how they have... Uh, uh, some common experiences in, and how they have some difference of opinion. Uh, attempt to identify share experiences among various individual experiencing the same phenomena I have discussed earlier. Uh, so let's suppose Z is an event which is faced by uh, an individual A, an individual B, an individual C, an individual D. So these are four people who have, uh, who have faced uh, a particular common event. So he will he will describe that event in his own word. B will describe this event in his own word. C will describe uh, this event in his own word. And D also will describe this event uh, in his own words. They may have different uh, uh, emotions about this event. Uh, some 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 of them may hardly uh, affected by this event. Some may have not hardly affected by this event. Uh, some, some may perceive this event as a negative. Some may perceive this event as a positive. Some may, some may have uh, already experienced this event before and, uh, and know how to cope uh, these types of events. So everybody has some common uh, perception about this event and as well as they may have some different perception about this event. So this type of uh, uh, research is known as phenomenological research. So as a researcher, uh, you will identify an event Z and you will go every person affected by this event and you will ask uh, what they have uh, 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 experienced in that particular event. So it becomes phenomenological research. 
so uh, let's suppose uh, this is a whole event uh, that two persons have shared like individual uh, self b and individual self a uh, as an individual uh, uh, you may have faced uh, this circle uh, and as an individual self b you may have face this circle as an experience so something they might have common like intersection of both the circles uh, they might have some common uh, experiences and they may have some uh, uncommon experiences like the uh, remaining part of their circle so this is this is basically the difference of opinion this is the difference of opinion uh, like a might have some uh, opinion that is not uh, relevant or not matching with the b and b might have some events or experiences that is not relevant to a but uh, there is something they, they have common in terms of experience uh, that is experience shared by a and b so uh, as a researcher you need to understand what is common between both of uh, the persons or both of the participants they have uh, shared that event so other individual self with their self no shared experience with a or b uh, there there might be other persons who uh, may not have uh, the common experiences with a and b so you need to understand that uh, as a as a participant as a participant uh, the participant may have something different from each other and there might be something common that you need to study uh, during that whole process of data collection so how to apply the phenomenological research uh, i have designed some step by step procedure for your understanding uh, so that you can be able to apply the phenomenological research uh, as an approach phenomenological research involves a systematic and rigorous examination of individual subjective experiences perceptions and interpretation of a phenomena it prioritizes understanding the meaning and essence of these experiences from the perspective of their participant rather than imposing preconceived stories theories or interpretations so uh, in in terms of methodology uh, phenomenological research typically employs qualitative method such as in depth interview focus group participant observation to collect rich detailed description of the participant experiences so uh, if you need to collect your data using phenomenological research you can either uh, uh, do it using in uh, in depth interview using focus group discussion i have previously discussed using participant observation to collect rich detailed description of participant experience these method allow researcher to develop deeply into the nuances and complexities of live experiences to uncover underlying themes pattern and structure so uh, analysis procedure in in this case if if you are applying a phenomenological research uh, thematic analysis will be employed in this type of research <coughs> then um, i i am going to discuss the practical example of application of phenomenological research let's suppose uh, we are we were discussing about the life experiences of surviving a plane crash uh, so what is the life experience of surviving a plane crash i am asking this question from the survivor of a plane crash so what what they uh, are going to respond in this study the researcher aims to explore the subjective experiences subjective means their personal experiences uh, this is not based on any types of uh, uh, factual information any type of uh, numerical figures they are providing their subjective opinion so th they become the subjective experiences so in this study the researcher aims to explore the subjective experiences of individuals who have survived a plane crash the focus is on understanding the essence of their experiences in including their thoughts emotions perceptions and coping mechanism in the aftermath of traumatic event so uh, what uh, as a researcher what i need to do uh, as a researcher the researcher conduct in depth interview uh, for the collection of data from the survivor of the recent plane crash these survivor are chosen through purposive sampling 
uh, to ensure diversity in experiences such as passenger with varying degree of physical injuries, uh, psychological trauma, coping strategy. So uh, you, you may have uh, uh, grouped the data in terms of physical injuries, psychological trauma and coping strategy. And you have collected uh, data based on purposive sampling using in-depth interview. So during the interview, survivors were asked to recount their experience of the plane crash in detail, including their memories leading up to the event, their immediate reaction during the crash, and their thoughts and emotion in the aftermath. The researcher encourages participants to express themselves openly and reflect on the impact of the crash on various aspects of their life. So this is how uh, th they are going to ask the question using in-depth interview so that uh, he, can, he, can, uh, uh, he can collect as many data as he can. So how to analyze that data? The interview data are analyzed using phenomenological method with a focus on, on identifying common themes. Uh, as I have told you that there may be some common uh, things they will share and there may be some different things they will share. So you, as a researcher, you need to understand both of these things. So common themes, pattern and structure within the participant description. Uh, the researcher engage in phenomenological reduction, breaking their own assumptions and interpretation to focus slowly on, uh, solely on the participant live experiences. So through thematic analysis, the researcher identified key themes uh, at what uh, things uh, most of the most of the participants have uh, discussed uh, that emerged from the participant accounts, such as uh, sense of disbelief and uh, shock during the crash, uh, feelings of fear, helplessness and uncertainty, uh, moments of clarity and uh, heightened awareness, uh, coping mechanism and strategy for survival. So they may identify a lot of things. Uh, physical and psychological impacts of crash on survivor life. So this is this is uh, a strategy that uh, I was want to ask with phenomenological research. Uh, the remaining part I will discuss tomorrow. Uh, if you have any question, you may ask because uh, the time is going to end. So do you have any question up till uh, this level? Deep, Somigul, Vakar, Muhammad, have you any question? Are you clear about the topic? Please indicate because time is going to end. All right. No more questions. So me gul, no vakar gul. All right. All right. So let's uh, let's continue from here for uh, from tomorrow uh, to discuss uh, in more detail about uh, phenomenological research and other aspects. Thank you very much. Thank you.